This video is to give you a little basic background about PV diagrams, what they are, and what we can calculate from them. So here's what the diagram starts to look like. It looks kind of like a graph, but it's not a graph, it's a diagram. The difference is on a diagram, I'm sorry, on a graph we have certain functions that are defined where you have a domain and a range to deal with. But on the diagram, when we're all done, it's not going to work. The functions just won't work. We'll have a problem because we'll have all these splines coming together to make a cycle. But don't worry about it. Just It's not a graph, it's a diagram. It's a PV diagram. That means it has pressure and volume in terms of SI units. We're going to use pascals and meters cubed. Now if I look at this, this graph or this diagram is going to have a representation of a gas in our system. So on the right I've got the cylinder. It's got a piston that can move up and down and inside of it I've got a gas. So on this diagram I can put a dot and that dot can represent that gas that's in the cylinder. So to represent it we say that it's a state. And the state is defined as pressure, volume, temperature, and the number of moles. All the stuff we use for the ideal gas law that defines the state of that gas. So the pressure is easy. I'll just read that off the vertical axis. The volume, I'll read that off the horizontal axis. And the temperature and the number of moles, well, they're going to be calculated from PIVNER. So I can calculate the temperature or I can calculate the moles. So somehow I've got to be either given T or the number of moles in one or the other to calculate the second. So that's how the dot represents a state on the diagram, all the variables from PV equals NRT. Now if I look at this, I can do a little bit more with it. Let's start with the fact that this, maybe I'll call that my initial volume. So I've got this pressure and initial volume. Now look at the, the uh, little container on the right, and I'll let the diaphragm or the piston go up. So the gas is expanding, it's pushing upwards, and the displacement is upwards. If that's true, then what I can do is I can put a dot to represent this new state over here, and this will be the same pressure, and I'm going to have a larger volume. So that's why I moved it to the right and that can be the final volume. So I'm going from the left to the right in this process. So now I've defined my variables. Now let's look at one more thing. I've got this pressure inside the gas. I'm going to let the pressure be the same for everything because you can see it went to horizontally. So this is the pressure. That's the height. And then the volume, I've got it going from initial to a final. So if I look at the change in volume, which is always final condition minus initial, then that would be something like this on the graph and you can see where they overlap in the dark red section. So if I take the height times the width, that gives me the work that's done because it's pressure times the change in volume. So height times width, that's the amount of work that's done. So in this case, the area is equal to the work. So on a PV diagram, the area is equal to the work, and not just the work, but it's the work of the gas. So in this case, if I go back and I think about it, the piston moved upwards, and the displacement was upwards, the force was upwards by the gas, so everything was going in the same direction, that's positive work. So whenever you have a process that's going from left to right, I've got positive work being done by the gas. And if it's positive work by the gas, we also know that that's going to be the opposite for the surroundings, so it's negative work of the surroundings. That's going to become important later on when we start talking about these two. So I can find one more thing from all this, and that's the change in internal energy, which is 3 halves nr delta t. Because I know from ideal gas law, if I've got the p and the v and the n, I can find the delta t. So I can find the change in the internal energy as 3 halves nr delta t. So I can find a lot from this PV diagram, but we're not done yet. Let's suppose, if you saw my little animation on the right, it went down. So it decreased the volume of the gas. So this time the process goes from right to left, the opposite direction. And if it goes the opposite direction, let's see, the piston's going down and the gas is still trying to push up. So the force and the displacement are going in opposite directions. That means it's going to be negative work by the gas, which is positive work by the surroundings. So the PV diagram has a lot of information on it. You can find the change in internal energy or the internal energy. You can find the work between two changes in volume, but you have to have a change in volume. And the area is defined as the work done by the gas. So it's whatever the gas is doing, that's defining uh, the work that's done in the area.